James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, today is March 24th, 2022. It is 5.30 p.m. Central here in the USA. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we started the day with a long-term double pop C flare that lasted two and a half to three hours and that was followed up by at least three or four additional C flares. Now we just about have a C flare baseline, although it does look to be dropping as I do this video. So ladies and gentlemen, NOAA is positive that nothing will be happening over the next three days. Their NOAA KP index breakdown on March 24th, 25th, and 26th is nothing but mostly ones and twos with an occasional three dropped in. So not even a KP4 is indicated all the way through the 26th currently. Now nothing special on Lasco C3 today. We can see that there was an eruption. And what I did want to point out to you guys is, well, these items here. Starting right here, I think it, let's see. see 1430 you see the board cube headed towards the sun remember that exactly 1430 go a little bit further up this a little bit and then at exactly 1730 to the minute we see some additional well i don't know what what it really is but it looks like they've been covering things then we're going to move forward to 18.30, exactly an hour down the road, and we have another situation where something is pixelating the camera at 18.30. Now, there is no data or time missing on Lasco C3 today. We supposedly had several C flares. We'll see if we can see those on STO and GOES. All right, we have a earth-facing coronal hole currently, guys. Uh, we should be seeing the effects, and I believe we are seeing the effects already from that, which is pretty amazing. They got here very quick. Uh, we have a coronal hole on the South Pole, and it looks like we have a coronal hole on the North Pole as well. The sunspots coming around the left limb has been described as nasty by several NASA scientists. Uh, and they are even warning of this northern uh, sunspot group creating at least an M flare while Earth facing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have some indications that we either had some space weather events or nearly had some space weather events. What they are, I still don't know. Plasma was never on ACE, real time space weather, above about seven centimeters cubed, dropped way below here. Uh, temperature has been extremely elevated all day long for solar winds. Uh, well, I guess they have been pretty, pretty powerful here. This is about 600 plus kilometers per second. No, it's hard to believe that that little sliver of a crawl hole produced that, but that's what they're reporting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, the D region absorption prediction center for our x-rays. And we're getting pounded. You can see the entire globe is being pounded by x-rays as it spins. And this is not good for your DNA. Uh, any living DNA. This is radiation. Okay? It's as simple as that. That's what this is. Radiation. And it is constant. Watch that ticker. We keep going. As the world spins, the radiation hits different parts of it and continues until they have no more data. All right, heading over to Discover, we see much of the same. Several indications of space weather events. But again, I can't match them up to anything, although this one has plasma much higher throughout the day than ACE did the entire day. But never really penetrating that space level indicator uh, maybe for a split second, but nothing that would cause all of these crossovers that you see here. 
Now, what we do have, and we have to admit, is we have some solar winds here. And I see some spikes that are 589 kilometers per second. 584 kilometers per second. Uh, I understand that that is space weather big time. I just can't believe that little crawl hole did this. Uh, this means to me, shields are no longer in place. All right, starting here at March 24th, 0100, you can see the solar winds shot up from 400 kilometers per second up to, they've got it up to about 650 kilometers per second. Now, this is a satellite. This is SOHO satellite, University of Maryland data. Uh, so it's going to be not ground-based like Discover ACE real-time space weather. This is going to be orbiting our planet. It might have been hit by stronger winds because of that. Now, these winds seem to be decreasing. There's been no plasma all day long. I don't know why Discovery shows 10 and everything else shows nothing. Makes no sense whatsoever. And temperature was very elevated on the other ones. On this one, it's not. So, again, this one's uh, orbiting the planet. This is our SOHO satellite. All right, taking a look at SDO at 193 angstroms and 171 angstroms, we see that the sunspots are extremely numerous coming around the limb and that several of these should be named. I don't know if they are yet, but we soon will. Uh, look at the activity in this northern sunspot and even really the, this uh, activity in the southern sunspot. And this is supposedly the coronal hole that did all this. Or is this one big coronal hole here that they're hiding from us? I think that's more or less what's going on here. This was one big coronal hole. That would be more explanatory of what's going on. Look at the coronal hole on the South Pole. And, well, it's just crazy how active this particular sunspot group is. It looks like we have other ones coming as well. So nothing over here is named. We'll see on SDO HMI magnetogram if it should be. They've named 2974 and 2975. They really haven't named this sunspot group yet or this sunspot group yet, which are going to both already be earth-facing because this is a very old picture. I'm talking about 15 hours. All right, a much newer picture taken 1800 UTC time just a couple of hours ago we're getting real lucky here i'd have to agree that these shouldn't be named looking at our sto hmi magnetogram image but i also have to agree that this should be named which it is and these are definitely two separate sunspot groups that should be named and this one will probably end up being named very shortly as well okay over to soho 284 angstroms plus the haze that they've added to it ridiculous this was actually taken five hours before the photo we just looked at, so we're not going to be able to see as much as we'd like to. But we can see that this should be a named sunspot. These should be two named sunspots at least, and probably more. And this is questionable. They're definitely lighting up. And we always see these weird little filaments. The corners, whatever they are, I'm not quite sure what they are. If anyone could ever tell me. If they're dark filaments, prove it. All right, we've been able to count on the Europeans. They've pretty much nailed the solar winds, although they are light on them. They have them at about 425 kilometers per second today, when I think they should be closer, well, to 600. Anyway, close enough. They uh, also have heavy plasma coming in on the 28th, 29th of about 35 centimeters cubed. They have solar winds completely dying off, so we should all be on the beach here for about two or three days until this enormous CME that no one knows where it came from hits us. Look at these ones that missed us over here. Imagine something like that hitting you. It's off the charts. It's going to be like 100 centimeters cubed. It's going to be nothing but havoc to planet Earth. All right, so uh, over to NASA's ISWA spiral. And what Dan or Finch was trying to tell us last night is that even when this big flare popped off, all these magnetic connections that hold the satellites and the planets uh, 
to the sun as it moves through the galaxy at 444,000 miles an hour. These are geomagnetic connections. They would also take some of the energy from this blast and feed it to each one of these, i.e. planets or these satellites that we've put up. They're also connected to the sun geomagnetically, etc. So some of this blast went down every one of these ropes, if you, if you will. That's your uh, geoconnective lines to each planet and to each satellite as seen up here. Now, this is the easiest one to look at here. You can see the plasma. It's supposed to first hit satellite ahead, then hit us, then hit satellite behind. The WSA in little uh, prediction center is supposed to be really good at doing that, but I guess those kids have quit or they've lost their minds, one of the two. God bless you and yours, folks. Please share. Please subscribe. Always remember that anything is possible, including an X-50 flare in Bizarro World. Stay safe.